Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Try it just one, there we go, try it one more time. Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship with the Cornwall Presbyterian Church, all of you gathered here in the sanctuary and all of you joining us via the live stream at home. Uh, Number of announcements at the beginning of the service. I want to begin by uh, welcoming uh, members of the Cornwall Historical Society and the sisters of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority who are here with us today for our first annual Harriet J. Terry Day. Very welcome. The celebration will begin in worship, but continues downstairs during our coffee hour. Please, everyone, plan to stay today um, for all the events downstairs after worship. I want to welcome the Hargrave and the Niblo family who are here today to celebrate Casey James' baptism this morning. It is very good to have all of you with us in worship. What a really joyous day this is going to be. There are announcements in the back of the bulletin. I call your attention to the uh, Narnia night that is happening this coming Friday, uh, to the Super Bowl of Caring, which our children will lead us in next Sunday with offerings to help fight world hunger. And uh, Kate Sampson has asked that the participants in Emmanuel God With Us, our midweek meditative worship time, Uh, Meet her or find her in the kitchen after worship today. Uh, The rest of the announcements you can read for yourselves. Welcome to worship. Our worship leader today is Jim Clearwater. I have uh, one more announcement. The uh, lasagna dinner is coming up in three weeks. Three. Short weeks. Actually, three weeks from yesterday. Um... This year, as as, uh, was last year, 100% of the proceeds go to uh, benefit Habitat for Humanity in uh, the city of Newburgh. And uh, everything that we use to make the lasagnas is donated. All the marinara sauce, the oven-ready noodles, crushed tomatoes, cheese, all that stuff we need to, to be donated and brought into church and put in the tubs that are downstairs in the fellowship hall. There are uh, two ways to sign up. You can sign up to, be, you know, for, to, to help um, via your email through uh, the Sign Up Genius, or you can sign up with the uh, sign-up sheets, which are downstairs. Now, I had last year's sign-up sheets. We saved them. I thought about just changing the date at the top, and then everybody would uh, everybody be already signed up. But if you want to upgrade your positions, you can sign up again. And uh, my wife, Jean, has tickets. Over there, she got tickets. Um, so you can buy them uh, starting today. Uh, I guess that's it. Thank you. So, uh, if you could please stand and join me in the call to worship. I'll start us off and we uh, read together the uh, bold print. Today is a day of joy. May our eyes be clear to see it. Today is a day of meaning. May our minds be open to receive it. Today is a day of growth. May our courage be up to the challenge. Let, Let us worship God who supplies our every need. And our first hymn will be number... 41 in the red hymnal. For our first hymn this morning, worship the King, all glorious above, let's sing verses 1, 3, and 5.
let us together offer our prayer of confession as we confess our sin together. Let us pray. Lord God, forgive us. We wrap our days in a shroud of busy routine that protects us from the rigors of what we believe. Our families are left too often lonely. Our neighbors are left too often in need of truth. And our community is left too often in need of servants. Interrupt us with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that our days may be filled with the work of faithfulness. You are invited to a few moments of silent prayer to continue your own confessions. Amen. Amen. My friends, one fact is true that never changes. And it is this, that God has loved us. God loves us still, and God will love us always. I declare to you in Jesus' name, we are freed and forgiven. Therefore, let us live with one another in peace. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. I would invite you at this time to stand and move in the sanctuary to share one another with one another some expression of peace that you know.
Please pray with me a moment. Shine within our hearts, living God, the pure light of your divine knowledge. In the midst of the multitude of words in our daily lives, speak your eternal word to us, that we may respond to your gracious promise with faithfulness, service, and love. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Galatians. Chapter 3, beginning at the 25th verse. Um, this is the tail end of a little section here about the purpose of the law. Verses 25 through uh, 29. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ. If you, are belonging, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Aaron's ends that reading. Now we're going to turn back to Matthew. Where's the where am I doing here? What am I doing? Matthew 21, verses 28 to 31. That's why. This is the parable of the two sons. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go to the work, go to work in a vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. The word of God in scripture, the word of God among us, the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Aaron and Nick Hargrave to come forward with their son, Casey, uh, to join myself and our clerk of session, Lori Branson. Friends, hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember that I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Obeying the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and we are joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. So you are all invited to remember with joy today your own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session and remembering with joy my own baptism, it is my pleasure to present Casey James Hargrave, son of Aaron and Nick Hargrave, to receive the sacrament of baptism. We practiced this morning being really comfortable up here. 
Aaron and Nick, I have these questions for you as Casey's parents. Do you desire that your son Casey be baptized? If so, please respond, I do. I do. And relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your son Casey? If so, please respond, I do. Question for all of you. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Casey James by word and deed, with love and prayer? If so, please respond nice and loud, we do. We do. And will you encourage Casey to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of the Church? If so, please respond nice and loud, we will. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks because you nourish and sustain all living things with your gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and graft them to the body of Christ. Pour your Holy Spirit out upon Casey that he may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you be all praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Casey James, I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Casey, God, guide, guard, and defend you now and always. Fill you with God's Spirit, and fill you with God's love. Amen. Casey James has been received into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and joined with us in the body of Christ. Would you join me in welcoming him using the words printed in your bulletin? With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you, Casey James, to bear with us in ministry. We are all one in Christ. There's a baptismal hymn listed in the bulletin. It says 499. It is 489. Wonder of wonders here revealed. If you would stand and sing, I'm going to bring Casey around to meet you all.
Karen and Nick from the church, we have for you a baptismal certificate. And for me, we have this book that I spoke to you about to remember Casey's baptism and follow his faith development in the coming years. And we also present you with this candle, which you can light a year from now to remember his baptism. Thank you. Thank you. You can be seated. Where are the children this morning? Raise your hands where you are. I'm not calling you forward, but I want to see where you are. I saw Jonathan just go out the door there. Great. Wasn't that beautiful? Wasn't that beautiful? Yes. <laughs> we have just declared what we all know to be true, that Casey's life is a gift from God. And that he is not only loved by God, but is now loved by all of us. Not just love as a feeling, though that might be there too, but love as a commitment. We just promised to love and care for him and for his family in just the same way that some of us children made that promise for you. I'm so excited to be sharing with all of you today both the sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of communion, because the two really belong together. In baptism, we thank God for the gift of life and for each precious life. And at the table, we thank God for everything that sustains life, that feeds us and helps us grow, both in body and in spirit. In these two sacraments, we are reminded of both the beginning of life and our journey through life. But what should we do with the life that we are given? How should we live if life is a gift and God is the giver? So we have this scripture story, which Jim appropriately called a parable today in which a man approaches his two sons and asks them to go work in the field, to go work in the vineyard. Go work in my vineyard, he says. And the first son says, nah, I'm not going to do it. Can you imagine the nerve? But then he changes his mind and he goes and he does the work. The second son responds, sure, I'll go, not a problem. And then inexplicably doesn't, and we don't know why. Jesus says to those who had gathered around him, which one of these sons did what his father wanted? And they respond, the first one. But I ask you, is that what the father really wanted? I don't think Jesus intended to tell a simple story and ask a question with an easy answer. Because really, given a choice, it feels like there's only one answer, isn't there? The one that those gathered around said, the first one, who said no, but then went and did the work. But Jesus told stories as parables in order to provoke thought. I think it is something of a trick question. I don't think either child did what the father wanted. I think what the father wanted was what I recently heard called willing workers. He wanted his kids to understand the task that needed to be done and to do it, to let their yes be yes. And I think this is what we do with our lives or should do. I think this is how we live life as a gift, if God is the giver. I think this is what God wants us to do with our lives, to figure out the work that needs to be done and then to do it. To figure out what God is doing, to love, correct, and heal our world, and to join in, to sign up, to take part, to find some meaningful way to leave our mark 
and to leave the world better than we found it because we were here. So we have another celebration today that I think addresses this question of what we do with the life that we have. Today is, as announced, our first annual Harriet Josephine Terry Day. Harriet was a young black girl who grew up in this church where her mother was a member 125 years ago. We don't know whether Harriet was baptized here, but at the age of 13, she was confirmed here which means that she acknowledged the gift of life that she had been given, a life that had been blessed in baptism. And she gave it to God. She committed it, committed herself to loving God and serving her neighbors, to loving God by serving others. In the year 1903, she was the first black student to graduate from Cornwall High School. And you may hear more about her shortly, and you'll certainly hear more about her at the celebration downstairs during coffee hour. So fun fact. One year when the public school building that Harriet was attending for classes, when it was being repaired under construction, the school children that year met right here in our sanctuary for classes. This was the schoolhouse. Another fun fact. At the end of the school year, when children graduated from elementary school and high school, there was always a baccalaureate sermon. In 1903, the year that Harriet graduated, that sermon was preached by the Reverend Hugh Russell Frazier, the pastor of this church, Harriet's church, her pastor, right here. You can imagine elementary school and high school students filling this place for a graduation sermon. And the text he chose for that special day was the story that we have read today about a parent saying to children, go work in the vineyard. The pastor's message for the children was simple. Take your life and do something meaningful that brings you happiness because you are serving others, that builds your character because it builds up the common good, what he called the common welfare that makes the world a better place for others and turns your whole life into an expression of thanksgiving for all that you have received. Harriet took her life and went on to college at Howard University, where she joined together with eight other black women to create an organization that would lift up and encourage girls and would always seek opportunities to serve others. She spent the rest of her life as a teacher, loved by her students. Today is her birthday, and after worship downstairs, we will sing happy birthday to her. So I'm full of fun facts today, far more than I'm sharing. So how about a happy coincidence? Today is not only Harriet's birthday, but also Elsa Cameron's birthday. Did you all see Elsa when she passed through here before worship? Very quickly. And the very simple and beautiful flowers on the piano today were given by Elsa in memory of Helen Cowdy, with whom she has shared for a long time her birthday. When Helen died last month, she was our oldest member and would have been 103 today. When someone dies in the church, we say that their baptism is now complete that the life has come full circle, that the life they have been given, we hope, has been used well. In birth and baptism, in life and death, in life beyond death, we are not our own. We belong to God. And our worship today is full of reminders of the full circle of life. Use yours well. Amen. Amen. This time I would like to invite Sonia Grant, president of the VIP Pearls, a soon-to-be local chapter of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, to come forward and share a few words with us.
to all. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. I am so touched by your, your message, your service to all, as that is our, also our mantra. And so I bring you greetings. Thank you again for this opportunity to serve. I am Sonia D. Field Grant, president of the VIP Pearls of Orange County, New York, an official interest group of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And at this time, I would like all members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated to please stand. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is an international service organization and was founded on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C. It is the oldest Greek letter organization established for African American college women. In celebration of a remarkable life well lived, we, the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, stand before you as the family of Harriet Josephine Terry, who never naturally bore children. And this is why I say we are the family of Harriet, your Harriet, who was born right here and became an educator, songwriter, and community leader. For she is not only a sophomore founder of our sorority, but she is a sister, a mentor, and forever friend, which is why I still speak her name. Harriet's birthday message to you all, give thanks for your individuality, for it is such a gift. The way you were created, flaws and all, the way the beauty is seen in you and unseen are all intentional, and it is intentionally part of your recipe. Celebrate it. Today we may see family or not, but we trust in knowing that the very spot you are in today was not a mistake. It's a perfect part of God's plan. The hardest part is actually believing just that. We celebrate you today and all that's in store for you. So repeat after me. Harriet, Harriet. Josephine, Josephine. Terry. Terry. Let's keep saying her name. Her legacy lives on through each of us. Thank you for this opportunity. hymn this morning is a hymn of dedication. Uh, it was chosen like our first hymn because it was extraordinarily popular in the 1890s and would have been sung here. Take my life. Let's sing verses 1, 4, and 6 together. Verses 1, 4, and 6. Please stand.
You may be seated. Our ushers will come forward at this time so that we can share gifts, tithes, and offerings for the work of the church. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to the table together in prayer, are there prayers of the congregation that you would like to lift up this morning, joys or concerns to give voice to? For Sylvia having health issues. Oh God, hear our prayers.
the friends and family of Lauren, a 33-year-old who died last week. O oh God, hear our prayers. A joy that we are able to celebrate the baptism of Casey James today. In joy, thanks be to God. And prayers continuing for Aunt Marilyn. O oh God, hear our prayers. Expression of joy for the two days of sunshine so long awaited. Oh, enjoy. Thanks be to God. For a friend going through a hard time and for family as they navigate this struggle. Oh God, hear our prayers. For a co-worker who lost her six-year-old grandson. Oh God, hear our prayers. Prayers for my family, my godbrother who's laying in Mount Sinai in Manhattan on West Bridge. So prayer for them. It was a godbrother? Oh. Prayers for family and particular for a godbrother um, in hospital right now. Oh God, hear our prayers. <laughs> Tomorrow is Ken Sampson's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ken. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Enjoy. Thanks be to God. Are there other prayers? Yes. Yes. Thanks for the lives of those we celebrate today, from Helen to Elsa and Harriet. Thanks be to God for all the lives we are celebrating today, including Elsa, Helen, and Harriet. Enjoy. Thanks be to God. For Eileen Tullock's return home from the hospital. Enjoy. Thanks be to God. And I will add the return of uh, Harriet Sandmeyer um, back home as well. Oh God, hear our prayers. Friends, we bring these prayers with us to the table. The words of institution will be incorporated into the prayer. We come. For this is Christ's table, and here he meets us. In the Presbyterian Church, this is an open table, and all who wish to know Jesus or know him more deeply are invited to participate. Here we embody what we have learned, remembering Jesus, that life and death are intertwined, and love is stronger than both, that memory can be both difficult and healing, that we are created and called to love and serve one another and find God in one another. That the journey once begun in baptism as Casey has today is fed and nourished always, encouraged in abundance, sustained in prayer and traveled together. Here, Jesus eating with friends who both love and betray him is both a painful memory and as the site of divine love, a celebration of present and future beloved community. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give to God thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, we praise you for your love bringing order out of chaos, breathing life into dust, leading captives into freedom, calling wandering children home, giving bread to the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, 
raising the dead to life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We thank you for Jesus, word made flesh, light of the world, living water, shepherd and gate, way and truth. Bread of heaven, cup of salvation, resurrection and life. We recall on the night that Jesus ate with those who both loved and betrayed him for the final time, he took bread, he broke it, blessed it, and shared it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take it and eat. Remember me. And in the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he shared it too, saying, this is the cup of the covenant in my blood poured out for you, my life. Take it, drink, and remember me. Take this bread and cup, a feast of grace. O oh God, take our hearts and lives an offering of praise. Spirit, 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 come and live in us, in this bread, in this cup, in your people, one in body, one in blood, one with Christ, and one in ministry, in this place, in every place, in this world, and the world to come. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power forever and ever. Amen. The elders will serve bread first, followed by the cups. Okay. There are gluten-free wafers on each tray. When you are served, please take the bread and hold it so that we may eat together.
My friends, this is the cup of joy in our salvation. Oh God, you are the maker of heaven and earth, and all good things come from your hand. We respond with lives of thanksgiving. My friends, as our prayers after communion, let us share together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our concluding hymn, number 372, Go to the World. Let us stand and sing with joy. Following the prelude, you are all warmly welcomed downstairs for fellowship. We have a cake for Casey's baptism. We have a cake for Harriet Terry and um, a program at 11.30. Please join us downstairs. My friends, may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the blessings of God Almighty, your creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Remain with you now and always. Amen.